Did you know that in a recent study, 39% of content marketers felt that they were unsuccessful attracting their content marketing? And of course, we know as digital marketers, without data, you cannot scale your business effectively. So in this Google Analytics tutorial, I'm going to get into Google Analytics for content marketers. Let's jump in. Hi, I'm Darren Mordecai with Rank Ranger. Rank Ranger is an all-in-one SEO and digital marketing platform that will help you grow your business through data and analytics. Before we jump into Google Analytics, let's first define what the goal of your blog is. Because if we can understand that, then we can find the right metrics that will tell you whether your blog is successful or not. Now don't think that the point of your blog is just a, play, a way to get organic traffic. It's way more than that. If your audience are coming back again and again and again, finding answers to their questions, then what have you done? You've actually established yourself as an authority in your niche. And more than just establishing yourself as an authority in your niche, you've built a relationship with them. You've become the go-to place for your audience. This is the point of your blog. With enough touch points, maybe they'll become your customers. Here we are, we're just about to jump in here. Just one little caveat. And that is to let you know that there are going to be small gaps in the data. Google Analytics has got great metrics, um, but there are small gaps. And perhaps I'll speak about it in another video. However, you can still use it, and that's what we're going to be working with. Let's get started. With that, what can you get out of this? So as, I, as I've mentioned before, we understand what the point of a blog is. We understand what it's supposed to do. But now we're going to look at the data and we're going to see what content to focus on. We want to look at whether your readers are consuming your content or not, whether they're looking at more content once they're finished reading, let's say one post to they go to another, whether they come back or not, because all of these metrics are user metrics. These are metrics that are going to show how you're connecting with your audience. Now to get started, let's begin with, okay, I'm going to go over here. To behavior. Now there's two ways to do this. You can click on behavior. This opens up as you can see. We're now going to go down to site content and all pages. Now before I click that, I just want to show you that you can really get to the exact same report by typing all. And here, as you can see, you get to all pages. So this here's the all pages. Or here's all pages, same exact thing. Let's go from there. And boom, here we are. Now, at, at this point, we've got pretty much all the URLs. We're going to look at, we, we're going to have Google Analytics, Analytics is going to show you metrics about all your, your, your URLs here. Um, this over here is pretty useful. You can use it to correlate different specific metrics. For instance, right now it's showing you a visual graph of page views. Now, what's kind of cool about this is you can select a metric, as you, as you can see over here. What, that you, what you can do there is you can correlate things. In other words, you can now add another metric. So you want to see, let's say, how your page views um, correlate to, I don't know, your bounce rate, let's say. So you can add bounce rate, and that will show you on top of this graph also you know, another line showing the bounce rate. And you can say, ah, the page views went up here, the bounce rate went down, or whatever, or maybe they went up, or whatever. So you can basically use this to correlate different things. But that's, okay, that's just another side. That's not really what I'm going to focus on. Let's, let's get back. Now let's get into the report, okay? So scroll down, and you get to this report here. Okay, now this report over here has all your URLs over here. Um, it's not showing the whole URL, so forward slash and then the, you know, like basically the end of the URL. Um, page views, unique page views, average time on page, etc. Okay, so these are going to give you some very big picture metrics that we're going to start to work with. So for instance, Oh, before we actually get going, it's very, very important since this is this this tutorial is all about understanding how your blog po posts are working and whether your users are using the, the blog post or they're interested in the blog post. So we, we're going to have to first filter out only 
blog post URLs because if we're going to get, let's say you have thousands of URLs on your page, some of them are, are um, let's say, product pages, some of them are about us pages, all those kind of things. So that, that's not really going to help you to understand your specifically your blog content. So we want to be able to filter blog content. Now, unfortunately, well, th th there's two simple ways to do that. The first way is if your, if your website has a separate folder called blog, that's the easiest way we can filter this. So we can go over here, we click over here, we don't have to filter, but what we can do is, this is the search bar, so what we can do is we can type, let's say, forward slash blog, forward slash. Now, um, this is going to show up on the URL if you have a folder called blog, right? It's going to, every single blog post um, is going to have the word blog in it, there in the URL, so then you click here and you're going to see only blog posts. Okay, however, unfortunately, if all your URLs are all in one folder and you're going to have product pages together with blog, you're going to have a problem. <laughs> and I don't really, I can't, you know, get into how to do that. But one of the ways to, to try and create filters would be perhaps to go up here, hit export, and you can do it with Google Sheets or, or, or Excel or something like that. And you can try and find ways to filter only your blog posts. And you can get this all these metrics on, on Excel and you can work over there. Um, I'm going to sort of assume that you, you've kind of figured this out um, or you have blog on your, on your blog um, and you found a way to do this. Unfortunately, as I said, it's beyond this tutorial to actually go into Excel, but let's say you've got it. Okay, now what are you going to do with this, this information? So you've got your page views. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do, and this is a very general, general metric. The first thing you want to look at are your page views, and you want to look at the most popular content, okay? Popular content. And so what we've got here is Google Analytics is showing your page views from the top down. What do I mean by that? Okay, this is showing you all your page views. Um, it's based upon, if you scroll up here, it's based on from January 26th to the February the 1st. It's usually showing like a seven day period, but you can you can really tell Google Analytics to look at an entire year's worth of data. You know, it's quite, you've quite, you've got all sorts of options. You can even compare, but we're not going to focus on that. I'm just telling you what, where, what data we're showing here in this particular report. Okay, so this report is showing seven days, over seven days, this first URL got 371 page views, this one got 219, etc. Okay, so what you, you can look at this uh, report, the page views from top down or bottom up. What I mean, top down means your most to your least, or you could flip it the other way. If you want to try and improve your worst ones, then you click here and lo and behold, you're now seeing the opposite. These are all getting one page view over that period. All right, so now we're looking at our top ones. So now start to look at your URLs and look at your top performers and say, okay, these are your top performers, right? Make note of them. At this stage, just make note of them, okay? At some point, we're going to have to correlate and figure out, like, why are these posts doing better than your others, okay? But no, these are your best ones. Because generally, in my experience, you're going to have one or two or three or a very low percentage of very high performing blog posts and then a bunch of bad, you know, like pretty bad ones and something in the middle. The high performing ones are the ones that are going to give your best bang for your buck. In this stage, at this stage, we're looking for in terms of page views, not necessarily sales. We could look at sales at another time. But this stage, if you, you're looking just to engage with your audience, so you want to look for your high performers. Now, go ahead, read all of them, see if there's something common between all your high-performing ones. Are they specifically talking about a certain subtopic that, 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 that people would be interested in seeing? Or are they formatted a certain way? Um, but make a note of your high-performing ones and then try to figure out, at this stage, why are those performing better? Now, before don't get too, don't spend too, too much time on this because at this stage, it's such a general met metric of page views you, you don't really have much to go on here. You just know these are your best performers. So you've kind of tried to figure out. However, let's now correlate this with a second metric. Okay, we're going to add a secondary dimension over here. So you see, I go over here and I click secondary dimension, click secondary dimension, and I type source medium. 
Okay, what will happen is, as you can see, um, you're going to get, um, it's going to suggest it for you. I'll just type in the source, boom. Okay, now watch what happens. So now when I click that, a secondary dimension means Google Analytics has now taken source medium and stuck it and, and put it into the, like it's created a new column over here. Okay, that's pretty useful stuff now because what we can do is we can look at where those page views are coming from. If, for instance, look over here. This one is getting um, Google organic traffic. So look at that, 317 from Google organic. It means that this particular blog post is getting a lot of page views from Google, uh, from, from Google organic traffic. That's good news. It means that my SEO is set up right. And that's fantastic. Beautiful. Very happy with that. Um, now, this particular one, and, and it, it's very interesting because this is only showing up once, this particular URL, okay? It means that it's only getting Google on organic traffic. It's not showing me, let's say, if I was getting um, Facebook views. So, you know, if, if people are clicking through from Facebook and coming to, to, to the post, then I would have seen that, but I'm actually not getting that. All I'm seeing is... Google organic traffic for that. So I thought, okay, all of my traffic is coming from Google organic. Okay. What would happen if you saw, let's say, a Facebook post is bringing you the, the so, that, so now you know, ah, the, 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 the strategy that's bringing people to the post is actually going to be a social media one and not a Google organic. So we, we can now tell basically where all these page views are coming from. Okay. That's pretty useful information because that's going to tell you how to get the page views, but that's really not going to tell you how people are interacting with those pages. So the next step really um, is to is to try and figure out like why this one is getting so much Google organic traffic. Look at the post, see what you did right, try to imitate that on other pages. Is it keyword optimized? Um, is it a long form post? Is it a short form post? Like start to look at where you're getting these 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 page views from. If it's getting if it's coming in from Google Organic, so you've done something right there. Maybe you can imitate something on another page. Let's try and figure out where you know what why this is doing so well in Google. Um, there's other but 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 okay. So so that's your app your acquisition strategy. The next step is, okay, beautiful. So we understand like this is this one here is, is a referral link. Um, so some of these are referrals, some of these are direct, some of these are coming from Google Organic, but you, you're gonna figure this out and this is gonna really tell you where your page views are coming from. So that's your acquisition strategy. And you can improve your traffic if you, if you understand where the traffic's coming from, and you can try and dig in to figure out what is, is, is creating that traffic. Now that's, again, as I mentioned in the introduction, very useful for your traffic metrics. But this is not really going to tell you how people are interacting with your post. Okay, and, and that's really the next step. The next step is we want to see how people are interacting with your post, because Again, you're looking for your high performers so that you can do it again. So let's now look at average time on page. Now, as I said in my intro, don't forget this is not a perfect metric. And some of this is actually going to show you, let's say, zero time on page. And, and sometimes people actually did spend time on that. Um, so that, that's something we could discuss again in another video, not now. So this is not going to be perfect, but it's going to give you some data to work with. So again, if I look at this page that's getting so much Google organic traffic, this is getting on average 24 minutes. I'm over the moon for 24 minutes for my personal blog. Now, that doesn't mean you're over the moon. Maybe the average time on a page on your blog, let's say, is three minutes to five minutes. Um, so what you're going to have to do is figure out some kind of a benchmark. Now, what I mean by benchmark, go ahead, read a bunch of your posts and get some kind of average as to how long it should take to be on a blog post. So if it's like a, a, a long how-to post where the person would be, let's say, reading and then going back and doing something and then going back to the blog post, they might be only here for an hour on average. 
you know. And if I'm getting, let's say, 10 minutes on there, then I assume, well, it's not really doing very well. Or maybe no, maybe they would read it from top to bottom and they're here on this thing for 24 minutes. That's averaging 307, uh, an average based on 317. It's not exactly, but let's say um, it's tracking all 317 page views. That's pretty good. Like I'd be very happy with that 24 minutes. But that's really blog specific. Um, so again, you know, if 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 it takes you three minutes to read your blog post and somebody's on there 15 seconds, it's not doing great. But on the other hand, it might be a very short post and they're getting a lot of organic traffic and looking at the post and let's say they're on for 15 seconds. I mean, that is in theory possible. Um, or maybe two minutes or but whatever. But but the point here is to look at your average time on page and to have a benchmark. Um, to go with. Okay, so again, for me, 24 minutes is great. I'm even more happy with, let's say, 45 minutes. Now, this might be different for each and every post, yeah? Um, but again, you know, you, some of the posts might be short and some are long, so you might want to benchmark for every post. However, the point I'm making here is this number is not a number set in stone for every single, uh, for every single uh, web page. This number is going to be very specific for your web page. Okay, so now we're going to start to get a sense for, oh, okay, people are kind of looking through and they're, they're interested in this, 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 this topic and they, 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 they're spending a whole 45 minutes on this blog post on average. That's a pretty good number. So I know, okay, good. Not only am I getting a lot of traffic, but I'm also getting traffic that's sticking. Yeah, it's sticking. Sticky traffic. <laughs> they're, they're sitting there and they're actually looking at the post. They're reading it. They're going through it. That's fantastic. I'm happy with that number, but I might not be. Okay. So if I'm not happy, with, well, if let's take, look at two scenarios. So in scenario A, I'm happy with that number. Fantastic. So I want to go and figure out what I did right on that page. So that could be the page um, is set up in a very user-friendly way with the right kind of graphics and all that kind of thing. So if it's set up beautiful in a nice user-friendly way, so people are sticking and they're reading through and they're enjoying it and there's H2s and those H2s are helping them to skim when they want to skim and they can find what they're looking for. So then that might be contributing here. And if it's maybe a huge block of text, maybe, well, okay, <laughs> if they're spending a long time on there, um, that, that, that might work for your audience. But sometimes you can find a scenario where you have pretty good content and it's a block of text with no H2s and it's not broken up nicely. And, and, and it can seriously uh, it can seriously diminish your average time on page. So you want to look at this average time on page and try to figure out what's causing that average time on page. So, yeah, and, and that's that. So when it's a nice long post, so I go to the post and I read the post and I see, look, is the, you know, as a user, is this easy to read, etc. If it's short, maybe no. Let's try to figure out. Maybe it's because people aren't finding what they're looking for, or maybe no, it's just formatted badly. So this this average time of page is going to give you at least something, a bit more insight as to how people are actually connecting to your pages and uh, are they spending time on the pages? Are those pages interesting for them? Okay. Once you've got that in that info, we've now discussed the traffic metrics and we've begun to look at how much time people are spending based on your particular benchmark. Now, one more thing before we move on, I just, I don't want to forget to say this. So just to keep focused here, why are we, are we so focused on average time on page? And why is this important to your average, to your content marketing efforts. So as I mentioned in the, in the introduction, the function of your blog is to make you the, the go-to person that your audience goes to for information about your niche. They're going to start to build trust in you. They're going to start to see you as an industry leader. It's all about you and them. It's a relationship between you and them. You're helping them. Where you are is you're their helper. You're their as someone who can help them and the more that they more time that they're going to spend on your pages and reading and consuming that's going to that's going to show you that yes your audience is, is getting something out of your content so you want to be a, you know you want to be the you want to produce the most useful content on the net 
and they're going to love you and come back to you. So that is why I want to make sure, you want to make sure that they are sitting at the top, you know, like they're spending a lot of time on your, on your pages. And that's why we've, we're so focused on this. We are now going to look at something else that's going to help us give an, even a bigger picture here. So what you're going to do is, this should be open here, so we're still in behavior, they're not all pages. I want you to now go down here to landing pages. Click over there, landing pages. Now we're going to see a whole new report. Good. Now, let's do the same thing. So let's filter out let's filter the blog. And again, that's just pretty much doing what we did before. We're now going to look at, you know, only the blog post, of course, and nothing else. Now you're going to see, again, here's your sessions. New sessions, new users, bounce rate, pages for sessions, average session duration, which is similar to what we saw before. And let's focus on one specific metric here, pages per session. Okay, now this is... I would say almost as important as time on page, right? Now we want to know how many p how many pages on average is a person looking at. Again, this is not complete data, but this will give you an indication. So if people are going on one, you know, looking at 1.37, so it's almost like two pages per session. That means they're not like going through hundreds and hundreds of pages. But let's say they're landing on our page, they're reading it, and then they're moving on to another page, and so on. This is good news. The more pages, the better. Because, simply speaking, they are going to be looking for more content. Now, if we keep focused on the goal of our content, the goal of our content is to build that relationship to be the most useful resource on the internet. If people are looking for information. They're going to find one page and they're going to move to another page and say, oh, I found more information that I, I, I needed. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my research on whatever topic I'm researching. I found one page and then I moved on to another page. So this is kind of, uh, this is kind of important to know. Are they only looking at one page at a time or are they moving to the next page? And are they, because they might read three or four blog posts before they trust that you know what you're talking about and move on to, let's say, make a phone call, make a purchase, or, or whatever action you want from them. So you want to always look at your pages per session as well as your time on, on, on page. Now, if you're seeing your, uh, your pages per session is not that high, let's say it's one, in these cases, these aren't really that high, okay? It could be higher. So you might want to look at strategies. Now, this is not in terms of the usefulness of your content, but let's look at strategies to get them to look at other content. So again, part of the usefulness of your overall site and the, uh, the user experience is, did I find everything I'm looking for? Could I explore a topic? Could I find more things on, on that topic? So you might want to put links in between the pages or CTAs that move people from one piece of content to the next. Um, many times I've seen with blog posts, people will write a certain blog post and they'll be dealing with a certain topic and halfway down the page they'll mention, oh, I've got a guide uh, and all, you know, a guide on this topic. In other words, you might be talking about a subtopic. I don't know. The example I always go back to skin lightening because I was, uh, I, I worked on the SEO of a, a skin lightening uh, brand many years ago. So they might be looking for something about, you know, I don't know, are skin lightening ingredients safe to use? So let's say they, they, they're looking at a blog post about skin lightening ingredients and because they're worried, are they going to be damaging their skin if they're using skin lightening, uh, you know, uh, products? And they're reading that and then halfway down the page, they say, oh, I've got a, a, a you know, a big picture guide to skin lightening. So that might be interesting to them because it's topically related. They're looking at the ingredients uh, post, 
but they might think, oh, okay, there might be more, more to know about skin lightening. Let's see what maybe we can find out about more ingredients. Maybe we can find out a little bit more how it works. Is it good? Is it healthy? Why? All these kind of questions that might be in the mind of your reader. So you might want to link out to related topics, but don't make it unrelated, obviously. So if we talk about skin lightening and then you sort of you know, create a blog post, I don't know, I can't think of a, a crazy enough example, but something not entirely related. So, you, you know, people aren't going to click through. So what you want to do is create um, a user experience that through reading about one topic, figure out the next topic that they would want to know about and then create a CTA about that. Link them through article to article to article. So this is not just about how useful your content is. This is now pages per session is really going to relate to how useful your overall site is and how useful the blog is. So you're going to have to make sure that your pages are easily findable, right? Is it easy to find what you're looking for? So it's not just about interlinking. It's also about making sure that let's say you have um, siloed off different types of content. I'm just giving you an example. I don't know. We, we could have like one, if you have a marketing blog, one silo of content could be SEO content and then another one could be PPC content, uh, blog posts, let's say. So maybe you could have those on separate folders at the top of the, the website. And then if people are looking for PPC kind of things, they can go to the top, click on the folder and open it up and browse the content. That That might also improve your pages position because having a lot of content is not that useful if it's impossible to find it so if you can make it easy to find simplify the process also have a search bar at the top of your of your web page so if they're looking for specific content they can search through your blog that might also improve your pages position because the more pages they look the more they're going to relate to you the more they're going to see you as the industry, the industry, the go-to person in the industry that they relate to, that they look up to, that they trust. So pages per session is your next metric that you want to improve on. And this is more a site-wide metric and not necessarily a content metric, but this is very much related to your overall acquisition strategy. So you've got a pretty good idea of the average pages per session now. You know which are your best posts. You've kind of starting to think about why they're the best posts. You, you already know where they're getting traffic from. Okay. Which, by the way, I didn't actually mention this when I was talking about the source medium. But one of the things you'll notice is if you use clickbait headlines, let's say, which I've tested this, I've actually tried it out. <laughs> not proud of it, but I have used these very curiosity-based clickbait headlines. So what you'll find is a lot of users are going to click on your, your pages and then the, the average time on the page is going to be very low because you're going to build curiosity and then they're going to go and they have to read this whole blog post to get to the answer, of, you know, whatever curiosity you built up in them. So if you're using that strategy, then you have to shock them as they land there, you know, you have to hit them with something that's wow, you know. <laughs> um, but usually that's not a good strategy for a business, so so don't use that. But but anyway, so it's it's important to you'll in other words, getting a lot of page views and um, a low time on site is not gonna really be a good thing for your content marketing. You'd rather not use those curiosity based headlines. You're gonna rather focus on headlines, let's say from social media that are, are gonna promise the viewer something useful and then you, you act on that. So you'll get maybe less views from that, but you're gonna get higher quality. So now we're gonna move up to here to audience. And we're going to look at cohort analysis. So click over there to through to cohort analysis. Now, I have no idea what the word cohort means, but cohort analysis is going to tell you how many pages do, do people return back to your website or not? Are they returning or are they just looking for a second and or, or going once and then coming not coming back? 
This is super important, okay? So look at here. Here we have day zero. Day zero is 100%. This is always going to be 100%. Meaning, the day that the people looked at the blog post here, yeah, let's say, they read your blog post. Fine. So here they are. That's all. That's 100%. Day one is the next day. 2.16 people return. Day two, less, less, less. And it's going to go down to zero. Okay? Now, this is useful because... If people are coming back to your blog posts, people want to know, ah, you know, the first blog post was great. I'm going to come back. I can't wait to read the next one. So this is establishing your relationship with your audience. That's what you want, right? So if people are just going, landing, and never coming back again, so this is going to tell you that. And again, you might now want to think of some strategies to get them back again. So if your content is spectacular, so fine, they'll come back. Maybe they will. I don't know. Maybe you've made enough of a good first impression to get to a second impression. That could very, very well be, and, and, and all could be all you need is to write good content. However, you might want to write series content. So what you could potentially say is, um, I'm going to cover topic X, how to gain SEO traffic. Let's imagine that is the content that you're putting out there. So your first piece will be how to create, how to generate SEO content. Let's talk about metadata. And then you could say, okay, but once you've got your metadata, you're going to have to now start to figure out how to, I don't know if that would be your first thing, but let's just say it is, it might be keyword research and then metadata. And then we want to talk about how to create content, but create all, all of that those topics are subtopics that could potentially be fleshed out in separate blog posts because each one of those topics, metadata maybe is quite simple, but um, writing good blog posts that are good for SEO and read well, all the rest of it, that might take a bit of time and ex to explain. So you might want to make that your second piece of content. So what you want to do is call this one part one and say, okay, you know, um, next week I'll come out with part two, and next week part three. And, and what you can do is tease your audience to read the next one, to come back again. That's one strategy. That's within your content. Then what you want to do is once you've actually pulled, you know, created those blog posts, you want to create links between them. So last week I spoke about topic X, link, right? This week we're going to talk about topic Y. So or the last three weeks we spoke about X, Y, and Z. Link, 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 you know, three separate links. And then, and then they can always go back to your old content. And that's going to help. Well, that's really going to, you know, it's going to help them to see more than one piece. At the end, you want to tease them to come back next week. So that's one strategy. Um, there's even better strategies, by the way. Um, if your content is spectacular, what you do want to do is get them on an email list. Okay, now there's going to be a whole, we can perhaps create a whole separate tutorial as to the best ways to get your people onto an email list. Maybe you could create a pop-up for more content, click here, or something like that, or promise them something. Um, okay, lead magnets, uh, you know, putting, you know, getting them onto a lead magnet, that's a bit of a sticky subject because they can be a bit spammy and it could often, you know, often, you know, marketers send out horrible lead magnets or, or things that people download and they never read. Um, in order to get their email address. So you want to be upfront that, yes, this is going to be an email address. I'm getting your email address. I'm going to send you emails. You know, it's not, and you're not going to be, um, you're not going to be uh, spammy about it and you're not going to be salesy about it. Because nothing bugs me more than when I sign up and I'm looking for that piece of content that they're promising me. So I download it, I read it, and then I start getting sales emails. And that's really annoying. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to, spam them. I'm not saying you shouldn't use sales. There could be a time to, to, to send out sales emails. Email marketing is its own its own beast and it's got to be understood and it's got to be done tastefully because you, you really are you're really getting access to someone's personal space and you, you have to respect that. Okay. But I'm not going to speak about that more. I'm just telling you that one of the ways is to get them, you know, to get people back looking at this cohort analysis, how are people coming back to your blog post? To your, to, your, to your site, to your blog. So you might want to get them onto an email list. Another way is push notifications. I've, I've used that and I've seen hundreds of people come back through the use of push notifications. 
the the you know the return rate isn't that high. I mean, you know, so what a push notification is is you'll have a little um, sign up. It looks like a little pop up, very small, that you know get more content here or something, and you click there. And what that'll do is it'll remember your email. It'll you know I'm not exactly sure how it works, but but what'll happen is when you post something, it'll push out a little ad at the bottom of your browser. Um, that will try to tease the person to come back to your to your blog. Um, I've seen this gain quite a few views. Uh, email's better if you do it right, I think. But again, I'm not an expert. I mean, there might be better ways to do this so that I haven't tested. All I'm trying to say here is you want to get people back to your blog because you are going to be their go-to place for information. They're going to trust you because you know what you're talking about. And they're going to look to you for information. They're going to come back to you. So you're trying to find ways to make them come back again and again and again. Two or three blog posts, they might love you. So these tactics will bring them back. Once they're back and they come back again and again, you might already be establishing that relationship, which could down the line end up as a sale. I'm not going to focus on getting the sale now. I'm just focusing on improving your blog posts. Okay, so here we are. We've looked at all the data and Google Analytics. We've gone through all different ways to understand your, your blog posts and to improve them. But there's one thing left to do, and that is to look at Rank Ranger. I'll tell you why. Rank Ranger has integrated Google Analytics data. That means that we can pull Google, Google Analytics data into the Rank Ranger software. Now, there's more than one reason for this, but the one I'm going to focus on is it gives you, we, we are able to pull the data and then to visualize that data in a specific way. By doing that, we can get a certain picture. And I want to show you one such report. So let's jump in. Here we are in the Rank Ranger interface. We're out of uh, Search Console and we're in Rank Ranger now. The reason I want to show you this report is really this is a Google Analytics report. We've got Google Analytics and also, funnily enough, Search Google Search Console integrated with, with Rank Ranger. And I want to show you this report now. So to understand the report, Google Analytics does not show keyword data. I think there was a time when it did, but it at the moment does not show any keyword data. And if you want to get any keyword data and rank tracking data, so you have to go to Google Search Console, right? And it can be a little bit confusing. You know, there, there are things that you want to get from Google Analytics. Um, and from there, you want to maybe take that data and go straight into your keyword uh, your keyword data, but you can't really do that anymore because you have to then move over to a whole new tool. So at Rank Ranger, what the uh, what the the developers at Rank Ranger did was they created a report which could correlate the two, and that's really really this report over here. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is um, a little bit of an advanced um, you know use of Google. Analytics because we're going to also have Search Console. Okay, so here we go. Here we are. Now, I just want to show you you've got your traffic. Traffic, I believe, is your page views, um, which is really a, it's organic traffic. Okay, it's organic page views, really. Um, and then you've got your traffic trend, right? New users, that is a normal um, Google Analytics uh, metric. Here you're getting your change. In other words, how much has it improved? Um, and then your new user trend. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then again, revenue. Now revenue is also from Google Analytics. So this is pretty much all your Google Analytics metrics, um, just visualized slightly differently. And now we get to clicks. Where's clicks from? That's Search Console. Impressions, that's Search Console. Average click-through rate, Search Console. Average position. So these are all Google Search Console um metrics and okay so before we get to using the metrics we've got to now as we've done in the past we've got to create a filter so in rank ranger your filter is this um funnel icon here you click the funnel 
Okay, and now we can filter pretty much everything. We can filter your landing page, your traffic. We can create a filter for just about everything here. So let's filter out only blog posts. Okay, and since this is a tutorial about blog posts and improving your blog posts, here we go. So you can use this in the similar way to the way I explained how you would use you know, your page views. So use your page views to look for your best traffic, for your, for your, your, your best pages. Okay, um, so we could do that here, right here in Rank Ranger. So we could say, oh, well, this one gets the most traffic as opposed to this one. And we could see, we could try to figure out why this one gets more traffic. That's one thing you could do. Um, once you've looked around and you've got all the data, you can now start looking at the trends graphs. Now, the useful thing about trends graphs is if you see things that are trending down, let's say, um, that means that you're getting less and less and less organic traffic. So let's say this was trending down. I mean, nothing's really trending down here. They're bouncing around a bit. But let's just say this was like dramatically trending down. So what you could say is, ah, okay, um, I've used the, the, you know, the Google Analytics metrics and I figured out which is my best pages and all the rest of it. But I'm noticing that this is trending down. So what am I going to do about it? So let's start figuring things out. So now we can start to move over to Search Console. We can say, ah, oh, okay, you've got this amount of clicks, these amount of impressions. Um, and then you get to click through right now often what you might have is an average position I don't know uh, really we don't have the data you know I don't have a report to show you but I'll, I'll just give you um, an example let's say hypothetically speaking you had a very high average position okay let's say this average position was you know one or two or three and an average click-through rate was very low so then I could say ah okay um, a low click-through rate with a very high average position, probably the SERP features that are taking away organic visibility. So this already is, is going to start to give me some insights as to why the traffic is trending down or trending up or whatever the case may be. Once I've come up with some kind of hypothesis and I'm ready to uh, well, if it was to do with click-through rate, then we could we could you know go on to Google and do a bit of SERP analysis and try to find, um, let's say uh, there was a featured snippet taking away traffic from our site or something like that. So we could try win the featured snippet. So you know, search console, search console. That's one of the ways you could use this very really useful tool. Um, another thing you could do is like let's say oh it's trending down. Well, I want to improve my content to get more keywords so let's look at keyword data okay so you see it says here keywords so let's say I wanted to improve this post over here this this URL let's say was trending down and I thought oh you know what I want to expand my reach and start to include new subtopics in the article to 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 improve my my organic rankings okay so we could go over here and we could click the keywords and um, that takes us to the Google search console keywords report and as you can see here you've got your total clicks total impressions average click-through rate average position so this is pretty much google search console within rank ranger and now we could start looking for um, let's say what i would normally do if i was in search console is i would start looking for um, keywords that are ranking on page two so we could look at our average position here and we could say uh well these are all on page one here hmm page one page one page one <laughs> uh, okay yeah here we go so here's a keyword that is ranking on page two it's position 13 right so if it's in position 13 um, maybe I want to get and let's say that URL um, I wanted to get that URL for this SERP right for this keyword onto page one and it's really on page two so now I can look at this keyword and see does this make sense in the context of my blog post should I add this as a subtopic you know and 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 this is a whole keyword in its own right so what I could then do is I could improve my um the the scope of my content by writing that subtopic I can answer I mean I don't know what this actually is 
right and right of 510, whatever that is. But, but whatever, you know, a person would be looking for this thing, um, you could add that into your blog post and then that would, that would really, you know, imp improve the, uh, the quality of the post and the, uh, the size of the post. And generally, you know, I found in the past, you know, when you do this, um, you eventually start to get onto these SERPs. Right, and and that will expand your your traffic. So this is this is another way that you could improve your um, your site, your blog your blog post, by by finding you know um, page two keywords and then ranking them on page one. But the way you do that is through improving the actual content itself. Now now that I'm in Rank Ranger, um, it's you know th this is a total aside now. But what's pretty cool about this is I, I really love this function. You can hit the add keyword button. So in other words, if you now uh, decided, okay, I'm including, which one did we say? This one is, here we go, this one. So I want to include Brighton Rider 510, whatever that keyword means, into my blog post. And I write it into my blog post. Well, I want to also know if, if, uh, if I, you know, I actually, if, if I improved my rankings for this. So what I can do is I can hit add keyword and that'll go, that will add the keyword into the Rank Ranger rank tracker. And then I can see that on the rank tracking dashboard, is it going up, is it going down? So it's a way to integrate really not just um, Google Analytics and Search Console, but it also integrates with all the uh, the reports in Rank Ranger themselves. And so th this way you can sort of start to find, you know, find a way to improve your, your rankings by improving your your uh, your content and you can track it using the rank tracker okay here we are at the end of the tutorial hope you enjoyed it if you liked it give us a thumbs up please comment with any questions or any suggestions or anything like that we're going to be looking at all of those and here's just a quick summary as to what we looked at okay we discussed first why you blog that's to create a relationship with your audience Secondly, we went into all the different metrics and we discussed actionable insights that you can apply to each one. For instance, we discussed page views. Page views is a way to see what's working, what's not working, so you can improve on that. We discussed source medium. Where's your traffic coming from? We discussed average time on page. Are your posts successful? Are people bouncing straight away? We discussed pages per session. Are people going from one post to another? Are they finding your whole site, your site as a whole, useful? We looked at cohort analysis. Cohort analysis is, are people coming back? And then we discussed actionable insights to improve all of those things. And then finally, we discussed the Rank Ranger landing page traffic insights, where we integrated Search Console data and keyword analysis together with Google Analytics so that you can improve your rankings. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.